Windgrid is one of the largest controls that has the most functionality and rich features within the Windows Forms toolset. So in this video, I will attempt to show you as many features as possible through the scope of this time duration. So there's many ways of getting started with the grid, but for this demo's purpose, what I will do is I will go to the data sources window. And what I'll do is select one of these entities, such as customers, and click on the drop down and select ultra grid. I want the ultra grid, or otherwise known as wind grid, to represent my customer's entity. If that doesn't exist in yours, you can always go to the customize option or menu item, and then make sure you check off ultra grid, as well as any other infragistics controls that are compatible with collection type data. So, what I'll do is I'll drag and drop the customer's entity onto the form, and again, you know, this is great for you know building quick applications but there's many other ways of setting up WinGrid within your enterprise application whether you want to do it programmatically and so forth so what I'll do is I'll click on the dock property and just set it up to fill the other thing I want to do is <coughs> I want to view the code so that I wanted to add actually a few more components here because I wanted to fetch the orders and order details because this is a hierarchical grid as you notice it already identifies that customers have other child entities associated with them so let's go back to the code and let's fetch the rest of the data Okay, we got the orders and order details. Now the focus of this video is to basically show you many different ways of configuring the grid. So right now, if we were to just run this, you'll see that I have all of my entities fetched all in one shot. So all my customers' orders and order details exist on the form simultaneously. The grid is very, very great at handling lots of data and here we have all these entities and just keep going and drilling down into all of them so let's have a little bit of fun so by the way the tool this toolbar that's added from Visual Studio is part of the Microsoft um, control set so it just throws that on there you could also use our Windows Forms Ultra Tools Manager as well as the ribbon that you can configure with the, tools man with the toolbar manager and lots of different types of UIs that you can create for the grid. So let's take a look at setting properties. So you can always go through the property window and explore the various wind grid properties. And what I want to show you the way it works is essentially you have many properties here at the base level. As you can see some of them here like basic properties that you might expect. But the majority of your time spent setting properties will be in the display layout. This is where you configure various items, such as the add new box, like do you want to show it or not? Do you want to work with the various bands? So the bands represent the entities in the grid. Now you know I've added customers, orders, and order details. Well, here they are because they are bounds at design time. We have our customers, orders, and order details. Then you could configure band level properties, like do you want to show what's the caption on the add new button? Like please add a new customer or here's different things such as card view. Do you want it to go into card view, which I set it to true. Notice how it turns into card view, but let's set it back to false. And the other property that's very important for each band or entity is the columns collection. So here's where we access all the customer columns, so customer ID, company name. This is where you set a bunch of properties for each column, such as the headers, caption, the um, do you want to allow grouping? Do you want to set a value list for the actual column? So these are all the various columns for each one. And now if you just skip down past the columns and just shrink this back up, these shrink back the bands, then you have various other like fixed rows, empty rows, many different properties. The scroll style, you could set it to deferred, immediate, scroll bounds scroll to fill I like this one I'll show you exactly what that does once I run the application again but again just to give you a quick idea so this is if you want to do multi band or just plain old flat grid a single band and again the purpose of this is just to kind of give you a feel for where all these properties are 
Now, another property that's in here that you could expand and it's even larger is the override. So right now we're in the grid.displayLayout.override and this is where we set properties that affect the entire grid. So active cell border appearance, active row appearance, add row appearance, so a bunch of appearance based items. Do you want to allow update on the entire grid? True or false? Card spacing, cell padding. So if you want to really configure the grid with super granularity, you'll be going through the grid.display layout and then you'll go to each band for setting custom bands properties like I want customers to do something but I want orders to do something else then you go down to dot override and work on all these other items here so again I'm not this could seem a tad bit overwhelming but don't worry about it once you get the hang of it you just kinda scroll through and look at the property names and they're pretty much self-explanatory you can do this or let me show you the other way of configuring the grid which I recommend for people that are new to Infragistics controls click on this big start button on the grid in the designer and you get this designer here, the Ultra Wind Grid Designer. And we could go through the feature picker. So all those items in the grid.displayLayout and grid.displayLayout.override can be found all batched up here. So for example, if you want to set up auto fit columns, you could do, okay, let's resize the last column or extend the last column here. So let's we could do that, or just none. We could do card view again. You want to set card view for certain bands. Like which basically means that it will convert instead of showing rows, it'll convert them into cards of data. So it depends what type of data you're looking at, but card view. Um, I personally think card view is great for uh, a flat grid of data if you want to show like a, a grid that doesn't have a hierarchical collection. However, it, you can show cards in your lower bands. But keep in mind that whatever band you set as the card, that will be the last and final band. See. I, once I click my customers into card view, I can't go into their, I'm sorry, when I click on orders, I can't get the order details. That will become the final band. So keep that in mind. Then we could enable column moving. We can enable column sizing and different types of column sizing. So free and synchronized, it's different types. Um, the other thing we can enable is empty rows. So if I enable empty rows, these are just non-interactive elements that just kind of finish off the look and feel of the grid to you know kind of look like it continues and then there's different variations of this empty row style that you can show then we can enable these other great f value add features such as filtering let's allow filtering and then we have different types of filter UI so this is a default filter where it's a simple drop down where it, with a distinct list of values, but I personally like the filter row where it's a more complex dedicated row that you could just start typing stuff in there and I'll show you that when I run it. Then we could turn on fixed headers which you get these little pin icons and you could pin down columns and you could do the same thing with pinning down rows. Now we have buttons on our row selectors so we could pin those guys down. Then we could have different types of sorting so I like multi-column sorting. Um, I data error info is if you have if you have data objects that implement the i data error info interface with validation and business logic in there you can set this up and then you can specify rows only or rows and cells that go in error and it will basically pop up and show an icon where there's an error state as well as tooltips that represent your business objects error message you could also enable merge cells where whenever columns are sorted and if the same value is on top of each other all those same values get merged into one cell. Outlook group by I believe almost all grids should have Outlook group by especially when you have a lot of columns with variation in the columns so that way you can create groupings off of those columns and I'll show you all this when I run it. Row selectors you could turn them off so default behavior essentially is whatever the control developers here at Infragistics decided to set the default value that's or default behavior that's what that means and then you could also explicitly set properties such as show them or don't show them in my opinion when you don't show them and if you want to allow selection of rows you're just going to have to uh, you know work with some code to kind of activate or select rows based on clicking you know whenever the end user clicks on something but whenever you do show row selectors, clicking on a row selector definitely and explicitly selects a row.
Then we have other things such as row sizing, like do you want free sizing means that if you size one row, the rest will remain the same. Synchronized means that when you size one, they all become that same size. Different types of scrolling, scroll bounds, scroll to fill. Remember I set that one in the property window? Well, you could set it here too. There's different scroll type, deferred or immediate. Immediate consumes a tad bit more resources, but it's not really noticeable on my machine. But, you know, immediate means that as soon as you start scrolling, it's right in front of your face. Whereas deferred, as you scroll, you don't see any movement, so you jump the scroll bar up and down, and whenever you let go of the mouse, whenever you let go of the mouse, the grid just jumps to that location, so it defers the scroll. That's a little bit more high performance than this one, but I like the immediate because it looks great. Tooltip, selection, do you want, you know, single select, like for example, you could only select one row at a time, or do you want extended select, meaning you click on many rows, control click, you know, shift click, I mean, there's always one active row, and could only be one active row, but selection is different. Selection means you could have zero or many selected rows or cells. And then we could turn on summaries, which we get a little icon in the header here. Then we could turn on updating. So updating can be set up with the add new box. So you could click on a button on a toolbar to add a new business object to your entities, or you can just do it the easier way where you just show the add new box and we give you a button for each entity that you wish to add a new entity to. So that's very convenient. Allow row adding. And the thing is, allow row adding, we could, I mean, in addition to the add new button, you could also do something with the add row. So allow at bottom of grid. So that one's cool. So you could show one or the other or both. Let's just turn them all on to show you what it looks like. Then do you want to allow row deleting as well as updating? So the updating node handles adding, deleting, and updating all in one shot. Let's also go to the data schema. Or actually, let's go to the band section, the band settings. So some things that we could do with the bands. So for example, I could, um, let's say, go to customers here, look at the columns. There's various things I could do with these columns, but let me, more of the work will be done here. So if I go to the orders, I could do things here such as say if I wanted to set the format of this column, you could go to the column.format, mm, dd, yy, yy. If I go to the freight, I could do this, letter C for currency. I could also set the column.style to one of these controls here. So we can choose one of these guys and edit, an edit button, drop down, validate. So there's many different things. So this is a currency, we'll set this up as a currency editor. So there's many different choices we have here from this enumeration. You could also take an Infragistics control, any one of our editor controls that implement I provides embeddable editor, throw it on the form, and then go up here to the editor components and locate it. So since I don't have any Infragistics editor controls that implement I provides embeddable editor, we can't really hook that up. The other thing you could do is you could get the ultra drop down control and then go to the value list property. So you could get the ultra drop down, hook it up to some data, and throw it on the form. And then what you do is you go down to the column dot value list that's most appropriate and you select that drop down from here. You'd want to do that with the foreign key ones, such as if I go down to orders and columns, I'm going to go to, let's say, product ID. I could, gra I could grab. I could create basically a list of all my products from the products table, throw it in the ultra drop down, hook it up, and then go here and select it from there. And then what it'll do is I'll be able to have a drop down instead of the product ID. So I just set the format on this guy here as well to currency. And let's say quantity, I could go here and set this up as a numeric editor. So I could do different types of numeric editors or integer with or integer positive with spin buttons. So let's just take a look at what this did for me. So as you see, everything looks a little bit brighter here. I got more stuff going on. And now I have this big grid with all these cool functionalities going on. I have my you know my columns have been resized because I set some properties before. 
such as auto size and I size them back so I could pin down some columns so if I want to pin this one down and I scroll left and right it will always be in view I could keep my eye on let's say this guy here and that guy there so now when I scroll notice that they're pinned against the top Imagine the stock market apps out there that you can do this with, or the inventory management, or customer management, and anything out there where you want to keep your eye on some things, just pin them down. I could clear the filter, I could set a filter, I could say show me everything that equals this guy right here, here let's clear it again. Then I could um, select the logical operator, give me everything that contains F, K, or A, E, nothing with that. S, S. So those two guys contain SS. We can also do, uh, you know, many different types of filters we can do here. Um, we could even match regular expressions. So pretty complex stuff and really rich functionality. And as I expand these guys, notice how I did the formatting here, the formatting there. My currency editor, when I click on it, notice it's a currency editor. I can't just type whatever I want, see how it, it beeps at me. I have to type numbers in there. If I expand it even further, notice when I go to my quantity, I get spin buttons in my numeric integer here. Numeric integer editor. So I can also do summaries. I could do all these guys, min, max, count, sum. And it gets shown here underneath that band. And again, there's a lot more stuff we could do, but this video just to show you some of the various features and functionality that you can enable on the grid. Again, Outlook group by, let's say if I grab the country column and drop it up here, we're now grouped by countries, meaning a distinct list of values is made from that column, and each distinct value becomes a row. So all my Brazil records are here, and we could do a grouping within a grouping, because now I want to take a look at contact types. And now if I go back to Brazil, in Brazil we have two accounting managers, one assistant sales agent, two marketing assistants, and so forth, and then we could focus on these records. Notice the cell merging. The cells are merged because we have one cell and another cell with the same value. But when you click off, it becomes merged. And it's like a visual thing. The other thing we could do is that multi-column multi sorting. So let's say if I sort first on, if I go on country, sort on that. Let's let's just bring city next to it. So first country, then I believe we hold Alt. Nope, we hold Shift and then we have a sort within a sort. So if we scroll up, we have Argentina, and then we have these three records here, then Brazil, then we have these records there. So all these valuable things that happen just by setting properties, then you get a very rich grid with all this functionality. Wanted to add a new customer, click on new customer, and then we jump right here, we start adding values. So if I escape out of that, notice that we still have a default add new row. Remember the add new row that I also chose to show? this is always there so if I want to add a new order I could just jump down there and add a new order and you can set up your business object so that when a new object is created it'll give you like like what you see here the data set that's automatically generated gives me a negative one and then after the data set is populated and, and resolved back to the back end the real order ID is fetched depending how your back end is set up then we could add new order details to each one of these then there's so many other things we could do but I will use other videos to do this otherwise this will be a very long video Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com